Hi guys! Thank you for joining. My name is Anna and welcome to this channel Make the Change where Anastasia and I talk about how to arrive, excel and thrive in Canada. And don't worry, even though you can't see Anastasia today, she's here, she's behind the camera. So we've been getting this question quite a lot recently. How do I learn English or how do I improve my English? So today I will share my personal life hacks and tips on how to improve your English in a cost-effective way. So you can take your IELTS exam or any other test for that matter and pass it and feel good about it. And if you stick till the end of this video, we're going to have an exciting giveaway for something that will definitely help you get better at English. Knowing English is very important if you're going to move to Canada, whether for work or to study or through any of the multiple immigration programs. The reality is, the better you know one of the official languages of Canada, English or French, the better your chances are to move to Canada in the first place and then to find a job, to assimilate, to socialize and to have the fulfilling life. And in this video we are not going to talk about any language courses, because we recognize that many of you trying to move to Canada want to optimize financially. I remember myself when I was getting ready to move to Canada, I had to save money for several months just to be able to pay for one IELTS test. Of course it wasn't easy for me, and I also had to pay for English courses to prepare for IELTS. All that cost quite a large amount of money. In addition to that, I had to save money for my future move to Canada, not to mention all the expenses related to getting a visa. Now, looking back, I realize that there are so many things I could have done that would cost less but being no less effective. That's why I came up with a few ideas and ways how to keep improving my English at home without having to pay extra money. So I will share my tips with you so you can keep preparing for your IELTS test or just keep improving your English in general for your future life in Canada without having to pay extra money or maybe even leave in your home. Let's get started. First of all, let me share the main principle behind my tips. We should try and recreate the English-speaking bubble in our day-to-day -day life in our home countries. Even though we can't go to an English-speaking country to learn English there, we can at least recreate some aspects of it. And let's start with an easy one. Take your cell phone. Yes, yes, go ahead, take your cell phone. Go to the settings and switch it into English. You can pause this video to do the switch. And voila! You are already using more English in your day-to-day -day life, because the only device you use the most during the day requires you to use English. Next, you can do the same with your TV, tablet, PC, laptop and other electronics. Believe me, even if it's scary in the beginning, after some time your brain will switch and get used to seeing English. And you might even start forgetting what different steps in your menu or settings were called in your mother tongue. Now, let's remember four aspects of IELTS exam. Listening, reading, writing and speaking. So how can you practice those four aspects at home? Easy! You just need to surround yourself with English. And when I say surround, I literally mean hours and hours of exposure to English in different forms. And you should do it until the point you stop having headaches from hyper-focusing because you're trying to understand and translate something. That's when you finally realize that English is becoming your second native language. When you wake up, start your day with reading or watching the news in English while having breakfast. My recommendation would be to use any English-speaking news channel like BBC News, Euronews or any of the American or Canadian channels. You can choose different topics that you're most interested in. And I would even go further and say don't limit yourself and read about anything, whether it's technology and innovation or art or politics or health, any topic is fine to improve your vocabulary. But what if I don't have a lot of time to follow the news, you might ask? Well, you don't have to have a lot of time, because you simply can do it while having breakfast. And if you don't like to read, you can do the following. You can practice your listening skills by listening to podcasts and radio while you're going to work or home, working out or just taking a stroll. Back in Russia, I used TuneIn radio app on my phone to listen to Canadian, American and British radio stations. Those aren't hard to find, you can google what popular radio stations there are. In addition to this, 
of course I would also recommend YouTube. And I'd like to take a pause here and thank you for watching this video, because you're doing the right thing as YouTube is a great source of educational material and information. It's a must to practice your listening skills. You can watch anything like TED talks or talk shows or interviews with your favorite celebrities, but make sure to regularly come back to this channel. Another thing to mention, eventually you should start listening to different people talking with different accents about different topics. It's very important because Canada is a multicultural country and sometimes there are days when you're exposed to heavily accented English more often and more frequently than native English. Luckily, more and more content on YouTube has subtitles these days, or at least auto-generated subtitles, to help you understand the content of the video if your level of English is not super confident yet. Studying English can be exhausting, but it doesn't have to be. It can be fun. Studying can be either active, like we talked above, or passive and fun. How about watching your favorite show in English? I, for instance, loved watching films and shows in English when I was back in Russia. It allowed me to practice my listening skills and learn more about North American culture, their humor, day-to-day -day problems, how people communicate and all that. Unfortunately, some movies and shows aren't available in some countries on some platforms like Netflix or Amazon while they are available in English-speaking countries. But luckily, there is VPN that can help you find anything you're looking for. VPN can also help you set your location to Canada if you're using dating apps to meet people from Canada. Canada. I can personally recommend NordVPN. I used it before coming to Canada to be able to watch Canadian and American Netflix, and I still use it to this day. I will leave the link to it in the description box below, and if you click this link and use our promo code Make the Change, you will get 73% off your two-year plan plus one additional month for free. Okay, we've got a hang of listening. Now let's switch to reading. Do you like reading? If you say you don't, I should probably quote J.K. Rowling here. If you don't like to read, you haven't found the right book. Reading is an essential part of IELTS test and your day-to-day -day life in Canada. Whether you want it or not, you will have to be able to read and understand written and printed information. Whether it's books or articles, it doesn't just allow you to practice reading, but you can also read it out loud and practice your speaking skills, record yourself, listen to the recording and adjust your pace, intonation and accent. If you want to practice working on your accent even in more detail, you can find an audio version of the book you're reading and try mimicking the way narrator pronounces words and sentences. It's very awkward at first but it's so powerful and so helpful to practice your pronunciation and it works wonders. Next, we should talk about writing and speaking. Those two are the toughest to practice at home, because ideally you need someone to talk to and you need someone to check your writing skills. That's why when I was preparing to move to Canada, I found speaking clubs in my town and I also found a school with a native English speaking teacher. Nowadays, it's even easier to find one online. It costs even less to find English speaking friends or pen pals and keep in touch with them. You can chat on Facebook, Reddit or any other app like Tandem Language Exchange, maybe even use dating apps or make friends in the comments below. Please do make sure to be clear about your intentions to find friends on dating apps so that people can see it when they check your profile out. There are a lot of creeps online these days, you don't want to look like one too. You can start texting each other and then have a phone call or a video call. This will also help you learn how people from different English-speaking countries communicate with each other and their culture. And if you're interested in finding a pen pal friend, please don't forget to join our Facebook group. We're working on several ways how to help you connect with your fellow newcomers. Now, I think it's important to talk about how to structure and optimize your learning for a maximum retention. First, I suggest you study every day for at least an hour, instead of having a long studying session, but once or twice a week. You need to understand that practice makes perfect and you need to practice your language skills every day, especially if your level of English is not that high. And if you study just twice a week, you will forget information from the previous class easily, 
especially considering how busy and preoccupied we are at work with kids, various errands, and so on and so forth. To be able to make a good progress, you need to prioritize English and the time you dedicate to it above all else. And you need to load your head with English in its different forms throughout the day by listening, reading, writing, and speaking. Secondly, get creative about the ways how you try to surround yourself with English at home in your day-to-day -day life. And get clear about your goals too. Are you trying to improve your vocabulary but have trouble remembering words? How about the cue cards or flashcards hanging around the house during the week? or associations. Different people remember information differently. For some, it's easier to remember something when they see it, for others, when they hear it. Find out what works best for you. And don't forget to practice and practice. You need to grab the information you learn and drag it from your passive memory into your active use. We always tend to remember things better when we apply the knowledge, not just keep it in our heads as a theory. There is a nice game you can play with yourself throughout the day. Imagine like you're in an English-speaking country right now and you have to say something in English. For instance, if you're doing grocery shopping after work, and you imagine like you're in Canada and you have to approach shop assistant and ask him for plastic bags. How would you do it in English? Here you can automatically realize that maybe you are lacking vocabulary or grammar and you can google the word you don't know and learn it. The beauty of this game is that you can play it whenever and wherever. If you are still watching, we've got a nice surprise for you, especially those who love browsing and reading on the internet. There is a nice browser extension called Tukan. It helps you learn the language while you browse the web by automatically translating certain words and phrases on the page into English. That way you can learn English within the context of the language you are already comfortable with. It's fun, it's educational, and you can even play around with different difficulties. All you need to do is just download it, sign up, and go about your day like normal. We have a pleasure of partnering with Tukan to get you guys free premium subscriptions and I'm excited to share this news with you. The first 10 users who will sign up using the link in the description box below this video will get free Tukan premium for one year. Enjoy it and happy learning! And I hope all of the tips we discussed today will help you create your English speaking bubble around you so you can keep practicing English without ever traveling to an English-speaking country. Just please remember that practice makes perfect and you need to be patient about your progress. I hope you start implementing these tips as soon as you finish watching this video, because the sooner you start, the easier it will be, and the younger you are, the easier it is to learn new languages. If you are looking for pen pals or to practice your writing and speaking skills, join our Facebook group and give a shout out to our group members that you'd like to learn English together. We will do our best to facilitate that for you. And if you'd like to practice your reading skills, don't forget to subscribe to our weekly newsletter. And if you enjoy practicing your listening skills by watching our videos, please don't forget to click the like button below and subscribe to this channel for more useful content. I would also appreciate it if you share this video with your friends who are also trying to learn English. That's it for now. Keep learning, keep improving. Go ahead and check the description box below for useful links. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends!